Let me remind you of our Wednesday morning Bible study online. On YouTube. For YouTube. Friday corporate prayer. Five in the morning. On YouTube. For YouTube. And that on the 14th. Of October. October. Oh, today's the eighth. Yeah, on the 14th of October. October. We are having a membership class. <coughs> so if it is in your heart for you to become part of this house, please uh, give them your name and then on the 14th at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Then they'll give you all the information. The class will be on the 14th. The following day, the Sunday, after church, if you have not yet been baptized in water, we have a baptism service. Give them your name and then they will, uh, what is this? They will put you on the list and then you'll be baptized on that day. Single ladies meeting. Will be on the 27th October. At 8 uh, 6.30. The theme is single blessed. Single and blessed. Amen. So you will be given some tips on how to continue being single and blessed. It's 120 rands per person. Okay, Jesus Girls Camp is the following day, 28th, Saturday. Uh, Jesus 28th of October. Okay. Uh, the, the time is 9.30. Yeah, Jesus mm. Girls Academy. They will be having another meeting at half past nine right here. 28th of October. Uh, October. And then they are camp. Is from the 15th to the 17th of December. At El Teleker Youth Camp. Victoria is. 800 rands per person. Expression Camp 2024, 1st to 3rd March. Expression 2024. It's 2024. 3,199 rand. We could say 3,200. Uh, the reason why we are announcing it now is so that you can give, pay it mm. bit by bit, and then by March, you are there. Amen. Amen. So okay, those are our announcements. Let's go to finishing this subject of honor. Okay. Listen. They are playing a video. Are you guys playing a video? All right. Are you good with sound? There's no sound. Is that Elta Lecker? R.H. Kili expression. Yeah, I may. I may. Yeah. I may. You can do it. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah.
that last song we were singing is playing in my head so strong. Uh, we are looking at honor part 12. So the reason why I have made it so meticulous and then explained everything is so that when you hear people say honor or somebody say honor, you understand what they are talking about. I've realized that every time I try to listen to somebody talk about honor, it's actually honor to spiritual fathers, honor to spiritual fathers. I don't hear a lot about honoring God and honoring one another, which are there in mm. scripture. We need, we need to see honor in the form of a, a full package. Because once it is only focused in one area, it's going to appear as if that's the only place it works at. And yet, let me be honest with all of you here. As long as you are in the kingdom of God, you deserve honor. At one level or another, at some, some form of honor, you deserve honor. But because honor has got its own levels, we should be able to differentiate how do you honor in this situation and how do you honor in that situation and also being able to honor God as God. You know, honoring God simply because of who he is, even outside his works, just knowing his nature. Mm. That, is, that is why we have to see <laughs> that every one of us, <laughs> we must learn to honor. <laughs> Understand? You, we must learn the lifestyle of honor. It is a kingdom system. It is how God would like us as his children to live in his kingdom. It is a system that guides the way we should relate. I have watched a lot of videos of the war in, in Ukraine. And I see soldiers knowing how to respect each other and work together and have a relationship because there, if, if, if you don't relate well with the others, you, you might easily lose your, your life. And when, when one is shot or uh, injured, it's almost like everything stops. All the soldiers get around him and make sure he is taken into a car and rushed off somewhere where he will get medical attention. Why are they like that? It's because they have been trained to value each other's lives. Amen. Amen. And that's how God wants us to live in the church. If you do not have that in you, that the, 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 uh, the, the attitude or the mindset of valuing others, you can develop it. We don't preach the word to condemn people. And some people should know that, no, I, I, I don't have that in me. I didn't grow like that in my family, so I'm not, I can't honor
No, you must be able to say this is the way God wants us to live in his kingdom. And I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. going to learn to value people. And, and you can start with small things. Even if it, we are talking about honoring your 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 spiritual leaders, start with small things, but do practice honor. Okay. Now, we, last week I gave other meanings of the word honor, which means to be highly regarded. Or to highly regard if that's honor you are giving. To give due recognition. How many of you know that even in your in your workplaces, when you walk in there, whether you like this person, this woman, or this guy or not, because of the position mm. they hold, you are supposed mm. to respect them. Because that honor is due to them because the company put them there. So, this message is going to leave most of us with homeworks. Things to start learning. Lifestyle to start learning. How do I honor God? How do I honor another child of God? How do I honor marriage. How do I honor the Lord with my possessions? How do I honor my parents? And how do I honor my spiritual leaders? You will see that if you become consistent and intentional, you are going to start to feel that thing. You know some, when, when something starts taking over your thinking and the way you do, you, you feel it. You're going to start feeling, you know, I, I, I truly, honestly, and genuinely honor or am practicing honor. Now, another word for honor that I have not spoken about is the word glory. Honor also means glory. Now, I want you to see glory as a term that is related to royalty. Because glory also means dignity. So when you carry yourself in, with, with honor, it, it, it means you carry yourself with dignity because you know you are royalty. Do you know that every one of us here, we are royalty? Tell your neighbor you are royalty. Ask them how. Where nobody are royalty. Ask them, wow, how am I royalty? Where does <laughs> you are royalty because you are born Hallelujah. of a king? Amen. Amen. You are a king's son. Amen. You are a king's son. You are royalty. Listen. Amen. For as long as I will be talking to you about anything spiritual, you must know <coughs> that our communication <coughs> emanates from the throne. Are you understand what I'm saying? The perspective with which we speak, <coughs> remember, 
Kopula. When Adam fell, Adam has no hope. The world got corrupted. So we cannot learn values from the world. Even though there are some though of those we can adopt because they are good, say for business and just for living with people. <laughs> But the perspective must always be from the throne. We speak from the throne. We speak from the heart of the Father. Do you understand? And when we speak from the heart of the Father, when what we hear from the Father begins to change our lives, this is where we begin to have dominion. Somebody say, I'm listening. So, glory, I mean, honor is dignity. So, we have to carry ourselves with dignity. And it must begin with natural things. Things we, we can control. Natural things. <coughs> like the way you take care of yourself. The way you take care of your environment, your surrounding. <laughs> and the way you handle others. Your kind of hospi hospitality. Mm. Okay. Amen. Uh, Mamoruti is going to deal with that subject uh, in time to come. Let me read to you that the scripture in Leviticus 27, 25. Leviticus 27, 25. Because we're finishing, we're kind of uh, revising. It says, and all your valuations shall be according to the shekel of the sanctuary. All your Leviticus 27, 25. All your valuations. The way you are going to value. It must be according to a standard set in the holy place. Now they according to a standard set in the holy place. Meaning that there are many standards of valuation that we have. Now, the shekel of the sanctuary, it means the weight of value approved by God. So this would mean that if we today are to function according to the value system of God, it has to be determined according to how God says. So God must first determine the value and you adopt the value. <laughs> And then we said, revelation is important for you to understand honor. In honor, we find wisdom, humility, servanthood, the fear of the Lord, and generosity. It is exemplified through the spirit of acting the way the sons of God should. Now those are the things we have dealt with that I really pray that you must keep them in your mind. We should keep them in our minds. You know, you know, uh, give me Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1 there. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1. Uh, I will wait for you. Hebrews 2, 1. 
Let's read it together. Go. Therefore, we must give heed to the things we have heard, lest we... Now, what is he saying there? He says, if you hear truth and it, it, it strikes you, it pierces you, it challenges you, act quickly. Act quickly. Tell your neighbor, act quickly. Lest you drift away from that truth and you forget what you were taught and you don't benefit. The word of God is taught to be practiced. Say that to your neighbor, the word of God is taught to be practiced. We closed at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. Let's read it. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20. It says, I, I, I would like us to, to, I want it to be on the board because I, I really want you to read the Bible. So that we can read and, 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 and get what he is saying to us. It says, I can see myself on the, on the corner of my eye. Second Timothy 2, 20. Second Timothy 2, 20. And 21. Let's read it together. It says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor, some for dishonor. Verse 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, Prepared for every good work. Now, it says in a great house. What is this great house? That great house is the church. Because in the previous book, Paul said in First uh, Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, he calls the church the household of God. But now, listen to what he says. He says, in this great house, in this church, there are two kinds of people. Now we're coming to the reality of this. He says, in this great house, he says, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but there are also vessels of wood and clay. <laughs> some of them are for honor, and some are for dishonor. It simply says that in the church, there are people who are determined to follow God regardless of the price. There are people who want to serve God exactly as he, he says he should be served. But he says, but there are also people, they are half there, they are not fully there. They are, they, they, they are serving him, but they are not serving him fully. That's the kind of Christianity they prefer to live. And you know that gold and silver, which is for honor, this is the one that has been forged with fire and it is precious. 
And so God also sees them as precious. Remember, God loves us the same, but he will not use us the same. Unfortunately, he will not bless us the same. And then this side, you have this one of wood and clay. Things that are fragile. You, you, you put wood in the same fire that made that gold. Mm. Somebody say, I'm listening. If you take the same fire that formed yeah. that vessel of gold and you put wood in there, it's going to ah. perish. So he's saying there are people in the church who can never handle what these others can. They are weak. They are fragile. If you took a vessel of clay, lift it up, and drop it, it's going to shatter into pieces. Take that one of silver, throw it down, it's just going to go, 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 go and stand. He is saying there are people who cannot handle the glory because they have not been made into gold or silver. So they are fragile. And you know, the unfortunate part about this is that a lot of people like that they are turning Christianity into magic. Mm. It's those people who want you to lay hands on them and everything goes. You know such people? You know somebody who will say, I've got financial problems. Please lay your hands on me. And listen, if you, if you met a very prosperous person, ne? then you say, lay your hands on me. To release that. <laughs> release that anointing on me. And you use anointing oil. All that's going to happen is that you will move from an unoily head to an oily head. That's all you'll get. <laughs> People don't prosper magically. They learn to give and give. And, and obey God. And obey God. Until this thing happens. You know, I, I, my desire is to bring most of you to a place where you will not have to do warfare for certain things. Mm -mm. The demon, the, the demon of the road, I bind you in Jesus' name. When Jesus appeared to the madman of Gadara, that guy ran to Jesus. <laughs> Can you imagine? What would you do? Meet a madman. And he's running towards you. Hey, you are going to double the speed. But Jesus knew his authority. He knew that this man 
was running towards him for help not to harm him. Somebody say, Lord, teach me. You need to be a very, now, now here this verse is teaching us about how to become an unbreakable vessel. People who walk in honor, they become strengthened by the sacrifices they made in the time of honoring. And so some have moved from being wood and they have become silver. Some have moved from being clay. They become gold. And God says to them, I have formed you. You have become the vessel I can now use. A vessel I can now use. And let me tell you, say I'm listening. Let me tell you, God is going to use people to make you. Going to use people. Don't quote about him. Don't provoke. Don't provoke. Don't provoke. Mm, they will just paint you in any color. They will not anything about you, think that you don't even know. And yet, when we meet them, we must still Jesus. say grace and peace. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. God making you. Well, listen. When people dishonor you, don't pay them back with what they are doing. You do everything as unto the Lord. When they dishonor you, continue to honor them. You are not doing this for them. You are doing it because the Father, the King, said that is how you must behave. And when the due time comes, people will be surprised. Surprise. What, I mean, we, we go to the same prayer meetings, we go to the same church. Why does it seem this one is getting better things than me? Because he says, anybody who will cleanse himself. Do you understand? If you want to be a vessel of honor, it doesn't matter how you love what you are doing. If it is disturbing your ability to walk an honorable life, leave it alone. Get rid of it. Come out of those habits and start forming new godly habits. May the Lord help you to cleanse yourself. Amen. Amen. This verse tells us being honorable is a choice. God wants to use all of us. But we choose how far he will go. Somebody say, I hear you, Lord. As much as God will use people to forge uh, a vessel of honor in us, God will use people to honor us. God, God does not have any problem to make a person who does not like you mm. to honor you. He can do yeah. that. If you read your Bible, all the matriarchs and patriarchs were never rewarded by God without honor. 
Let's look at First Samuel chapter two, verse twenty. First Samuel chapter two, verse twenty. Samuel one, two twenty. Samuel one, two twenty. He says, First Samuel two thirty. Sorry. First Samuel two thirty. Oh, two thirty. Therefore, go to go. Therefore, says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now, the Lord says, far it be from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me, shall be lightly esteemed. Those were God's word to uh, uh, what's it? Eli. Because Eli was not rebuking his sons when they dishonored God. Listen to me, beloved. When God honors you, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. (laughs) He will frustrate your enemies with his goodness over your life. Someone say, that's me, Lord. Let me give you the benefits, some of, uh, uh, more benefits of, of honoring, of it, working in honor. Number one, when you walk in honor, you will have access to God's anointing. You are going to walk in, walk in, live in anointing. You know, anointing is an unction. Or it is to have grace or capacity to do certain works of God. Mm-hmm. This unction comes from the Holy Spirit. That is why John, uh, John in the book of John chapter 3 verse 34 said, Jesus received the anointing without measure. May you receive that anointing too. So I, I want you to learn this. Please listen. Listen carefully. There are ways you can access God's anointing. One of them is honor. Where you surround your life with being honorable and you know how to practice honor in any given circumstance. And when I say anointing, I'm not talking about the anointing to make people fall. Because you don't need that when you are in a boardroom. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When you are sitting facing people in in, uh, the captains of industry and you have to be making policies and decisions, you do not need to get anybody fall under the power. When you are standing before them, giving them your presentation, you can't pray, Lord, blind their minds so that they can just like it. Oh, oh. We need an anointing that is going to make people say, where did you get that? They don't know. 
that you know the spirit of the Lord. You know the spirit of wisdom. You know the spirit of understanding. You know the spirit of might. You know the spirit of counsel. You know the spirit of the fear of the Lord. You know the spirit of knowledge. And to you, that spirit is I am. That spirit is I am. In other words, as long as you are not in any situation, he's nameless. But once you get into any situation, he becomes what you need in that situation. If, if you get into a situation where you have to answer for yourself, he will give you what to say. If you get into a situation where you need wisdom, he will anoint you with divine wisdom. When you get into a situation where you have to display the fear of the Lord. You will simply act according to the fear of the Lord because it is an anointing that comes out of honor. Amen. Are you hearing me, Mazelwa? In the days in which we live, are these, this kind of anointing is needed more and more. Hallelujah. Amen. Every one of the patriarchs was anointed by the Spirit of God. Number two. Another benefit of, of, of honor is promotion or prosperity. Promotion or prosperity. These two things are the same, the same word. You know, Joseph was anointed with wisdom to interpret dreams. And in an environment in a, a, a situation of of uh, of slavery. He never put down his honor for God. He even honored the people he was sold to. Hmm? People who naturally you would say they don't deserve. But he honored them. And at the end of the day, God gave him the economy of Egypt to <laughs> run. <laughs> When I just walk in this honor, my God, don't be afraid. Walk in this honor. You run that department effectively. They can't even explain how. When I just fear the when Lord, I just serve God. You will run the department. Amen. Amen. But did you buy the boss or did you buy the position? Did you buy the, the whatever it is? And you will say, no, I did not. But I did not. This is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's hand. And it's marvelous in our sight. Joseph ran the, the economy of Egypt. And guess what? He was not corrupt. His own this whole family came to, to what is this place? To Egypt. He could have favored them. But guess who favored his family? It was Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, give them the best land. He did not make his family favors. He fed the whole Egypt and the region. They used to come there for food. 
Now listen, Mazalan. I, I personally, I believe in the coming days and years there will be matured sons, honorable sons of God who will supernaturally control and handle huge Amen. sums of money. God will place them there to run budgets of billions. In corporate or in government. And they will never be corrupt. And they will run it efficiently. Because of honor. Because of honor. That was what Daniel was. Daniel served through five kings, Bazaran. Five kings. Daniel five. Not just the Babylonian one. That's where he started. But he grew and became an old man serving five kings. When one kingdom goes, another one comes in, he would still be given uh, top positions. Because that honor, listen, <laughs> that honor <laughs> came from God. Amen. It was not something, it was not like his own ability. God gave him that spirit of excellence. <laughs> He became a vessel of honor. May you be a vessel of honor. A vessel unto honor. Number three. We are starting to wrap up. Number three. Benefit of honor is longevity. A long life. Do you know that the way David died was a testimony to his life of honor. David honored Saul. Even when Saul wanted to kill him. Even in the worst of trouble, David took care of his parents. He always made sure uh, about the safety and provision of his parents. These are laws and rules set by God. These are laws and rules set by God. And we must learn to follow them despite the circumstances. And the Bible says about him in First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 26 to 28. First Chronicles 29, verse 26 to 28. It says, Thus David, the son of Jesse, reigned over all Israel. Verse 27. And the period that he reigned over Israel was 40 years. Seven years he reigned in Hebron. And 33 years he reigned in Jerusalem. Verse 28. And so he died. How? How? In a good old age, full of days and riches and honor, and Solomon, his son, reigned in his place. You see, Amen. David saved his generation, and God honored him for it. The Bible says if you honor your parents, you will live long. Amen. Amen. And the last one that I want to share with you is on honor, a benefit of honor is what I call 
gener generational inheritance. When you walk in honor, that honor is going to uh, it's going to affect your children and your children's children. Did you hear that song? And your children, and your, your children, children, and your children, and your children. Where your children are going to learn from the way you live, but, but also God is going to bless you and bless, he is going to bless your children because when you were serving him they were in your loins. Do you understand? And that blessing passed on to your children. God when he spoke about Abraham he said he uh, for I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Genesis 18 verse 19. Paul speaks to Timothy and says, when I first Second Timothy chapter one verse five. Second Timothy chapter one verse five. Second Timothy chapter five uh, chapter one verse five. Yes, Uri, Paul. Paul Uri, when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you which dwelt first in your grandmother Louis. And your mother, Eunice, Eunice, and I'm persuaded is in you also. Verse 6, therefore I remind you to stay up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Ah. Here we see a picture we are not used to. Because we are used to a picture of saying this father has raised his children like this. Okay. But here there is a mention of matriarchs. Mothers. Okay, we know that Timothy's father was a Greek. Maybe that was where the problem was. But the mothers took the knife on the cutting side. And they said, <laughs> I am going to teach my children the God of my mother. Even when you are a single parent, you can pass on generational blessing. Even when you are a single mother, you can pass on generational blessing when you honor. When you honor. Somebody say, I hear you. There is a generational outcome when you serve God honorably. So, some people become generational perpetuators of a good heritage. Now, listen carefully. Some people okay. are the perpetuators or the people who continue to take down from generation to generation the, the blessing 
of God to their children because they take it from somewhere. Amen. But some become Banna. initiators. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And many of us, when you look back in your family, you don't see God. You don't see any service to God. You might see uh, uh, a veneration of ancestors. You might see crime. You know, you might just see things that are not good. But you have got to say, where I am standing right now, spiritually speaking, in this family, I am starting a generation that is going to be godly. So my honor and the way I live, I am going to be very deliberate. I'm going to make sure that the generations that come behind me, they will not catch the curse. They will not catch the curse of generations past. I am starting a new generation. A generation that fears God. A generation that serves God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, you can do it. Tell them you can do it. It is possible. You know why? Because it is not by might nor by power. It's not about how, how, it's not about you. Perhaps that's why it has to begin with you. Because God has placed in you the capacity, the ability to initiate a generation full of honor. Honor will begin with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let me read to you the final scripture. To show you that you can do it. With God's help, you can do it. Amen. Amen. First Chronicles 4, verse 9. First Chronicles 4, verse 9. First Chronicles 4, verse 9. I really want it to be flagged so that we read it. So that you, 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 and, and all, okay. It's up there. So let's read it together. One, two, three, go. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called his name Jabez saying, because I bore him in pain. Verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me so that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. So God granted him what he requested. God granted him his request. And I say to you, may the Lord grant you your request. Your request to initiate a new generation that is going to bring honor to the name of the Lord. Let me tell you something. Your God is bigger than the gods of people. Mudimu is bigger than your family altar. 
Mudimu komo holo fita outa family ya how? God is bigger than your family. Where the nebats na kamo metsim ba trupisi wa kamo metsim ba na li di no ha mudimu. It doesn't matter they were circumcised under the water and baptized under the water with those snakes. Somebody God say, is I am snakes. listening. Mudimu le haba upatize, mudimu ta upatula. If they have pierced you, they cut you. God will cleanse you. Ahuna ntweba wezi tenyona emudimu akapala kui river. There is nothing that God cannot do. Somebody say, yes. I hear you, Lord. Yes. There is nothing that they can succeed. How and now, O God, to me, La Mudimu, how you can draw near to your God. Ha, bona, bona, bona. Haba bisa badimu babo na. Haba bisa badimu babo na. Lwe na unani mudimu. Bisa mudimu ha. Swana le jabes, jabes. Be like jabes. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Swana le jabes. Just be like jabes. The Bible says. That when Jabez's mother gave birth to him, she gave Mama. birth to him in pain. And she named him pain. The causer of pain. The one who causes pain. And Jabez, God gave him just one thing. He gave him an honorable heart. Jabez honored God in spite of the name he was given. And Jabez said, the pain my mother is talking about is going to end with me. The pain my mother is talking about is going to end right here. It's not going to my children. It's not going to my children's children. It will end with me. I will carry the responsibility. And the Bible says, Lord, even if my, man, my name is pain, bless me. Even if my name is pain, enlarge my territory. Even if my name is pain, change my future. And Jabez started a new generation, which was as honorable as he was. Somebody shout, I will do it. Come on, say, I will do it. Tell, say, it stops with me. It stops with me. Amen. Stops with me. It 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 stops with me. Oh Lord. Hallelujah. The curses that are said to be in my family. They stop with me. They stop with me. The covenants by which my family was bound to satanic powers. It stops with me. Amen. May that be your testimony. May that be your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand on our feet. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Take a moment to connect with the Lord. Imagine you are the only person here with him. And just 
just say, Lord, or oh, that you'd bless me and enlarge my territory. Let's do that song. Yes. song says, the blood of Jesus has saved me. Whilst we are standing on our feet, I want to pray with everyone who says, I would like that same blood to save my soul. I'm giving him my life. I want to be a child of God from now on. And maybe when uh, you, you have been a child of God, but you backslid. But you are saying, I want to recommit my life to Christ. I want to pray with you too. If you need this prayer, wherever you are standing, can you just raise your hand? Fellow, to say, I want to make my life right with God. I want Jesus in my life now. Pray with me. Or you are saying, I'm rededicating my life to Christ. Please pray with me. If you are there, just raise your hand where you are. Hi, where I can see it. Is there anyone here? 